world titleists in the sport, Chavez's win streak is the longest among them. Coming up, a 12-round lightweight unification title bout between Julio Cesar Chavez and Jose Luis Ramirez of Mexico. And right now, let's rejoin our colleague, Larry Merchant. We're here to see two friends, two champions, two warriors do battle. We're also here to see if one of them, Chavez, has the right stuff and the left hook to graduate into a higher league. That would be the league of the Little Giants, the most famous of whom was buried today in Los Angeles, Henry Armstrong. Just 50 years ago, Henry Armstrong was in the midst of one of the most extraordinary accomplishments in all of sports history. He won three undisputed championships, featherweight, then welterweight, then lightweight, in 10 months. A decade earlier, Tony Canzanieri won four titles. In the modern era, only Roberto Duran and Alexis Arguello have been in that elite class of little giants. If Chavez wins tonight, if, then he will move onward and upward into the welterweight division and perhaps into that higher league. But Jose Luis Ramirez isn't here to cheer him on. Daybreak. 40 kilometers outside Mexico City lie the foothills to the enchanted forest Desierto de Leones, the desert of the lions. Inhabitants of the quaint villages which surround this desert toil at life, cherishing each day. Even if it's creating the necessary craftwork for tourist dollars, enabling them to lead only the simplest of existences. Perhaps the most significant figure to come out of these hills is here temporarily. WBC lightweight champion Jose Luis Ramirez is training, somewhat reluctantly, for most likely his final attempt to resurrect a once promising career. I must say that I was pressured into this fight. I have to fight the number one fighter from my stable. Since Julio is the number one contender of my championship, if I didn't fight, I become unknown. So I had to grab the opportunity. Ramirez's fall from grace began in 1985, after he lost his title to the sequined Puerto Rican peacock, Hector Macho Camacho. This performance disenchanted promoter Don King, who had a younger, more saleable Latin attraction, Julio Cesar Chavez, waiting in the wings. After I lost to Macho Camacho, Don King forgot all about me and didn't get me any fight for a year. My manager, Ramon, got upset, and that's why we asked to be freed from my contract. Then I signed with the Akaris brothers to promote me in Paris, France. Unfortunately, the lure of a new career in Paris was accompanied by the customary French leer at foreigners. For Ramirez, a Mexican Indian no less, it was difficult to adjust to life in a sophisticated city. In the ensuing two years in France, ten fights came and went, with the veteran Ramirez exhibiting only glimpses of his once brilliant skills. Then he reverted to his trademark methodical style in a hotly disputed victory over Pernell Whitaker. Most experts believed the Mexican had lost. Finally returning to his beloved homeland for good, Ramirez is still popular, for the dignity of once being world champion will never diminish. For a country still rebounding from the devastating effects of the earthquake barely two years ago, tonight's fight will bring positive publicity. Now Mexicans are faced with the prospect of choosing between two native sons. The old lion, Jose Luis Ramirez, or his dear friend and former training partner, Julio Cesar Chavez. Mexicans believe they will be proud no matter the outcome. For Ramirez, this could be his last tango. For me, it's not just another fight. I respect him as a person and as a boxer. Now that he's a great champion, he's defended his title well. He is a great man, but up in the ring, it's going to be war. He's trying to win, and I will certainly fight the hardest ever. After, outside the ring, it's going to be the same as always, a friendship that will, through the years, forever last. There was a time, years ago, in Culiacan, Mexico, when that man on your screen was the pupil. And Jose Luis Ramirez was quite frequently in the sparring ring, the teacher.
But tonight, Larry Merchant, this man, Chavez, once the pupil, enters the ring as a heavy favorite against his old stablemate. That's right. He's 26. Ramirez is nearly 30. Chavez is the up-and-coming star. But Ramirez, I don't think, was ever a star. He was the, the Pete Rose of boxing in Mexico. He just stuck with it. He didn't get a, a title shot until his 87th professional fight. There are a handful, as I mentioned, of undefeated world title holders in the sport of boxing. And among them, Julio Cesar Chavez has the longest existing winning streak. 59 and 0 by our listings, the listings of Ring Magazine and of the world governing bodies. Some claim that he has had 60 fights. He and his camp claim he has had 61 fights. One thing is certain, he has never lost. And 12 of those victories came in championship bouts. He is not a one-punch knockout fighter, Kevin Rooney, but 50 knockouts in 59 fights attest to his effectiveness. There's a lot of combination punches. He goes to the body, he goes to the head. He's got good snap, and when he hurts a man, they'll take him out. He's not a one-punch knockout artist, but he, he could knock you out one punch if he hit you right. Well, you see him now saying hello to some of the greats of the sport in the ring as we get ready now to enter the minds of the fighters a little bit as Kevin Rooney broaches boxing strategy in his tips of the night. One of the things we have to look for out for Chavez is very vulnerable to a straight left hand from a southpaw. He's fighting Ramirez, who is a southpaw. Here we see him against Aguilar. He got hit with a left hand. He stays very calm when he gets hit. Here's where Rosario gets right on the butt. He took it like it was nothing. He works the body very well, and that takes the starts out of a fighter. Here you see him working over Rosario. He's very close to him, which makes it hard for him to be hit, to be counted. He works upstairs and downstairs. He does that very well. That's one of the pluses for him. Now we're going to switch to Ramirez. He's very vulnerable to head punches. He stands straight up, and he's wide open for straight right hand, which you should throw when you're fighting a southpaw. We'll have to look for Chavez to do that, and that's something that Ramirez is going to have to try to get away from by bending. Now a plus for Ramirez is he, when he gets hit, he comes back right away. When he has a man hurt, he doesn't let him off the rope. Here we see him against Rosario, opening up with everything he had after he had hurt him. A good look at Chavez, and as Kevin Rooney pointed out there, he will be facing a southpaw in Ramirez tonight. His last title defense in April here in Las Vegas against Rodolfo Aguilar was his first fight ever against a southpaw. And now here comes the man whom Larry Merchant has referred to as the Pete Rose of Mexican boxing, one of the most durable fighters of this or any other era. You know, there's an interesting story about him as an honest workman. When he recaptured the title from Terrence Ali on a close decision, he refused to accept the title in his own mind, he told people, until he sat down, watched the tape of the fight, was satisfied that he won the fight. Then he said, <laughs> OK, I'm the champ again. Did he really? Yeah. That's something. That's something. I like that. I like that. <laughs> That's an honest fighter. That's right. And you saw the graphic, Kevin, that said that five of his six losses have been to past, present, or future champions. There are the names of the men who defeated Jose Luis Ramirez. Of course, he avenged the loss to Rosario with a fourth round knockout of Edwin Rosario a little bit later on down the road. Yeah, and he right. was knocked out by the great Oliveras when he was 18 or 19 years old. But he has been in the ring, actually, with more top ranked fighters uh, in the lightweight division than Chavez has, which is totally meaningless. Look at this. He's had 106 fights, Kevin. He's been fighting more than half his life, and his face is completely unmarked. That, that, that's right. Well, that shows that he takes a good shot, and he doesn't really get hit that often. Now, you know, he stands straight up, but he overpowers a lot of guys. The thing about this record is it's unlikely that we're going to ever again see a champion who's had over 100 fights. Once upon a time, it was not uncommon. We may never see it again. Tale of the so tank. many fighters have long amateur careers today. And because of the economics of the sport, we could talk all night about that. But first, let's look at the tail of the tape, which will show you that the two significant differences between the fighters, age, Ramirez, as Larry pointed out, pressing 30, Chavez just 26. 
and the reach difference 66 and a half to 64 not significant because Chavez likes to step up inside and fight his fight at close quarters anyway that is correct and the age doesn't matter neither I want to believe I don't believe in age the age is a state of mind what about the 107 fights as opposed to 59 that has nothing to do with it at this point. Just, you know, 59 fights, 100 fights, you know, at that point. It should All be right, no, let's uh, take a look advantage. at Punch Start, our statistical profile of how many punches these fighters throw. And you can see that they're practically mirror images, but Chavez is the quicker handed and more accurate puncher, and that's reflected also. You can see in the jabs, Ramirez tends to throw more jabs. They land about the same. They fight at such close quarters that they really don't throw that many jabs. <laughs> Two titles on the line, the WBA and WBC championships. By and large, they'll be using WBC rules, the most significant one in white there. There is no three knockdown rule. And now, for the pre-fight introductions and a special moment in honor of one of the greatest fighters in the history of the sport, let's go up to ring announcer Chuck Hall. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hilton Center of the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, where tonight, Don King Productions in association with the Las Vegas Hilton, presents Ole, 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 an evening of World Championship Boxing. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Elias Ghanem Chairman, Chuck Minker, Executive Director. Commissioners at ringside are Dr. James Nave, Mr. Dwayne Ford, Freddie Little, and Herb Santos. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I would ask us to pause to reflect for just a moment on the passing of one of boxing's greatest just in the past couple of weeks. A man who freed himself from the ghettos of St. Louis, Missouri, and went on to win three world titles at the same time in different weight divisions. He held the lightweight, the featherweight, and the welterweight championships all at the same time, the only man in history to accomplish that feat. After he retired from boxing, he became a member of the ministry and went to California to work with youth around the Long Beach, California area. He was not only a, an historical boxer, he was a great humanitarian. So what I, I would ask you now all rise, please, as I ask our timekeeper, Al Bicek, to sound the 10 count for one of boxing's greatest, Hammerin' Henry Armstrong. May God rest his soul. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the WBC representative at ringside, Mr. Dwayne Ford of Las Vegas, Nevada. Representing the WBA is Mr. Julio Castillo. And the representing the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dr. Elias Ghanem. The judges and officials assigned by the governing bodies for the next bout of the evening. The judges are Rudy Jordan of Los Angeles, California. Mr. Art Lurie of Las Vegas, Nevada, and Mr. Lou Tabbitt, also of Las Vegas, Nevada. The timekeeper is Al Bicek. Counting at the knockdowns is Mike Lachella. The attending physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Pomansky, Donald Romeo, and Albert Campana. And your referee is Richard Steele. The next bout of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, the main attraction of the night. 12 rounds of boxing, for the unification of the WBC WBA lightweight championship of the world. Introducing in the blue corner, fighting out of Culiacan, Mexico, weighing in at 134 pounds with a professional record of 101 wins, six defeats with 82 KOs. He is the WBC lightweight champion of the world, Jose Luis Ramirez. And in the red corner, also from Culiacan, Mexico, weighing in at 135 pounds. His professional record consists of 59 wins, no defeats, with 50 KOs. He is the undefeated WBA lightweight champion of the world, Julio Cesar Chavez.
Okay, I spoke to both fighters in their dressing room. I wanted to caution you to remind them to obey my commands at all times. Okay? I understand that. Okay, when if it's hit here, it's not hot or it's not low, okay? It's right here. It's not low, okay? Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck. One thing to keep in mind, Ramirez has been knocked down a few times in fights over the last few years, always early in That's the right. fight. That's right. I'm curious to see if that happens, if, if Chavez is going to finish him. Referee Richard Steele has handled Chavez's last two appearances here in Las Vegas against Edwin Rosario and Rodolfo Aguilar. No American referee has seen Ramirez for more than three years, his last 10 bouts having taken place in France. And, re and remember that this fight is as much about neighborhood honor as it is about world championships. That's right, that's right. These kids really feel that. Round one begins between two men who know each other as well as any two boxers in the ring today. Chavez is starting out going side to side, and that's very important. Because Ramirez only knows one way to fight, right, straight, Kevin? Straight forward. If he goes to the side, he's going to get a clean shot. Ramirez is a good puncher, though. We can't neglect that. He has a, you know, an excellent, excellent chance if he hurts Chavez to take him out of there. Chavez focusing his eyes on Ramirez's body, but he has not yet stepped in to mount a body attack. He hasn't thrown anything. Content for the moment to make Ramirez miss, as Jose Luis Ramirez is the aggressor in the early moments of the fight. Looks like Chavez is trying to feel him out. The first punch from Chavez was an uppercut followed by a right hand. Both landed. Ramirez takes a great shot, we all know that. Well, and of course, so does Chavez. He took the left hand of Edwin Rosario, regarded as one of the heaviest in the lightweight division. That, that is true, that's very true. Took it like it was nothing. Chavez continuing to focus his eyes on a spot below the point of Ramirez's chin. Ramirez pawing with the jab. The right hand was took. Solid right hand by Chavez. Oh, good left, left hand by Ramirez there. As they begin to trade punches now in the second minute of round number one. Feeling out time is over. A right to the body and a left to the chin by Chavez. And now he becomes, for the moment, the aggressor. Made a miss nice there. He slipped away. He just didn't punch. He's got to punch when he makes a miss. Two right hands. You'll see a lot of right hand leads from Chavez, will we not, Kevin? That's right. That's what you got to do. That's always effective with southpaws. Always. That's the book on fighting the southpaw. Lead with right hands. Chavez seems to be doing that. Good body. Another right hand lead from Chavez. Ramirez landed with the jab, missed wildly with the left. Left uppercut on the button by Chavez. He's thrown that twice and has landed twice so far. And you can see there his uncanny ability to make a fighter miss at close range. Ramirez just unable to find Chavez's head. That, that's very important. Very important. Right hand landed just at the end of the round. They felt each other out a little bit, but Chavez landed the more effective blows. What you saw there is that Ramirez is all bullfighter, while Chavez is fight, bullfight, bullfighter and bull. I mean, Ramirez is all bull. That was a good round. Keep close to him and then on the side. Close to him and on the side. Well, good work. You're doing a good, fine. Stay close to him and then to one side. You're doing a, a great job. That's good advice, but they should also add. They should also add when he gets to the side that he should punch. Okay. Seconds.
punch count statistic that showed Ramirez landing only nine of 74 punches in the round, a reflection of Chavez's ability to slip in close. And Chavez begins round two by landing a solid right to Ramirez's head. Now Ramirez begins to look to the body more than he did in round one. And that's what he should do. Body punches are very effective. Chavez countering to the body and to the head with the double left hook. Except for the right hand leads, Chavez is content to counter so far, Kevin. So far, that's right. It was a good right hook by uh, Ramirez. And there's a left by Ramirez, which is his best punch of the bout so far. Double right hand. <laughs> Both fighters beginning to step up the action now, and certainly Ramirez is finding Chavez much more than was the case in round one. He landed a very good left and a very good right, Kevin. And he opened up. He thought he heard him. He opened up. Good work by both fighters here. Well, and Ramirez has set himself up to be more effective by going to the body to start. Ooh. Boy, they're both working on body without body. Them body shots take it out of you. They, they take the adrenaline out. They take the wind out. They take your will to fight out. Solid right hand lead by Chavez. And a right hand lands for Ramirez in close. Good action here. There's another good body shot by Ramirez. The straight left. This is a much better round for Jose Luis Ramirez than was the case in round one. And he's gotten Chavez's attention. I might add, and vice versa. That's and, right. Oh, well, I, that's been the case <laughs> from the beginning. Well, Ramirez, uh, when Chavez leads with that right hand, it throws the fighter off. It gets him off his rhythm. He's been effective with it. He should do more of it. And come back with a left hook. So you don't come back with the left hook. But he hasn't missed with the right hand lead. No, he hasn't. Chances are I wouldn't mess with the left hook. Good left counter by Chavez, but Ramirez continues now as the aggressor, stepping up the pace inside. Concentrating on the body, it's a good move by Ramirez. That was slow while uh, Chavez down. It's a good little move to go to the side, but didn't punch. Solid right hand counter by Chavez. Good Both fighters landing as the round comes to an end. Was major league stuff you saw yes. there. Two experienced, terrific fighters probing each other for weaknesses. That's right. Going at it. Uh, be, always be ready to counter punch. Always try to hit him first. Always connect him. Try to connect him always. What rhythm? You have to put some more rhythm to it. I always hit him first. Don't give him a chance to anything. Keep, keep punching. Always close to him. The secret is that you have to fight uh, downstairs. I, I was a little surprised, Kevin, that Chavez is decided to be more of the boxer and stand outside. A little bit. He should be inside. Ramirez's corner gave him good advice to stay on the body, stay close, be aggressive, but work that body. That's right. And you saw the accuracy reflected in Chavez's statistics for round two as our punch stat computer operators had him landing 26 out of 45 blows. But it is Ramirez who moves forward more of the time. <laughs> Well, you know, I didn't see 26 blows land. <laughs> if there was 26 blows landed, you know, I think Ramirez would be out of there. <laughs> Kevin, are you trying to tell us you're not a man of the computer age? Exactly. <laughs> not when it comes to scoring punches. Somehow I suspected that was the case. <laughs> Kevin Rooney with us.
working for the first time as an expert analyst on HBO. Well, Ramirez is being very aggressive and being effective. Right hand and a left landed by Ramirez. That's and for the moment, he has Chavez off balance. Yes, he does. He's scoring effectively. Ooh. Chavez now landing again with the right hand leads. It's another good round so far. right hand lead lands. Kevin, what should Ramirez be doing to avoid that right hand lead? He, he should bend. Anthony Pointe should bend down. He should bend his knees. As you pointed out before the fight, his head is there to be right hit. There. And strangely enough, he's landing a straight left on uh, Chavez. Chavez oh. beginning to pick up the pace with counter lefts and the right hand leads. This round started out as a Jose Luis Ramirez round. Chavez has evened it up a little bit, but it's still wide open, I think. But we got less than a minute now, so we'll see who finishes stronger. It was a good body shot. Oh. Left and a right combination, both landed to the head of Ramirez. Both boys take a punch well. They've proven that. They both got hit clean and come right back. Well, Julio Cesar Chavez told us that he had something in his back pocket from the years of memory of being in the ring with Ramirez that he might use. Would you guess that it might be a decision to box a little more? Uh, it looks that way, going side to side, I, I guess, because he really hasn't shown much as far as, you know, I thought maybe with the left uppercut, but he stopped using that. Harold Letterman, our unofficial official, how do you score it so far? Larry, very, very close. I got a two to one Jose Luis Ramirez because of the fact that I think he's a little bit more aggressive at, uh, during the last two rounds and he's getting into nice straight lefts. And I think uh, Jose uh, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez is having a little bit of problems with the left handed style. I have the same score. Okay. Let's take a look at Ramirez as he comes in with a right uppercut and a straight left hand. Now let's take a look at Chavez as he works. A right that landed on the jaw. You know, when you watch an intra-squad game on a basketball team, players know each other so well that they have trouble scoring and it becomes a defensive exercise. Here are two fighters who know each other completely well and yet both have been able to land effectively. That's right. That's a good point to bring out there, Jim. Kind of interesting. It proves that if you're willing to throw punches and take chances, you're willing to accept punches. <laughs> and that's what both of these fighters do. Definitely, definitely, that they do. Fourth round begins. Already tonight in this arena, one unbeaten world champion has been upset and had his title lifted from him. That Miguel Happy Laura of Colombia, beaten by Raul Perez, 21 years old from Mexico. Chavez is 59 and 0 coming in. And for the moment, you saw that Harold Letterman and Kevin Rooney both had Ramirez ahead in the early going. But it's close. I should add here that I had Chavez ahead two rounds to one. change in the pattern of the bout. Ramirez continues the aggressor and continues to land and Chavez continues to counter well. well I thought Ch Chavez opened this round well and now Ramirez is starting to come on a little bit. See saw back and forth here. This is a good fight. I'm waiting for the explosion. Neither man's really opened up yet. Neither one's gone for the knockout. And I think somewhere along the line that's going to happen. Ramirez is staggered but doesn't go down. Chavez steps in. Chavez is known for his patience in this situation. Ramirez unable to fire back for the moment. And Ramirez is known for firing back in this situation. Chavez ain't doing enough in my opinion. 
Maybe too patient. He, he, had, he had him hurt. He didn't open up. He didn't open up. He stepped back, let the referee break him. I don't understand that. That's where the sparring comes in. They think they're in the gym, maybe. Another good left hook. Ah, I'm a little disappointed. No question that Chavez hesitated for a moment. Definitely. When he had the man in trouble. Definitely. He looked at the referee. Turn left by Ramirez, that's a beauty. But a right hand from Chavez. This is, to borrow Larry Merchant's phrase, major league punishment on both sides. 30 seconds left, not the 30. Now the exchange. Good body there. What should Chavez be trying to do? Ah, he should have just opened up whatever. He should have went to the body and the head. Head, body, body, head. Step to the side. I'm telling you, he had him hurt and he backed off. Maybe he bet the over. Maybe he was fearful of Ramirez's known ability to come back in a situation where he oh, is in no. danger. Well, that, that could be an excuse, but he should have opened up. Or possibly it was just his respect. Too much. You have to throw more punches. You have to throw more punches. Are you okay? Did he surprise you with that hook? Use your job. Use your job. Okay. Don't let him surprise you again. Keep on punching him. Let's take another look at just how that near knockdown occurred. A good left to the stomach. And Chavez counters right over that left to the belly with a right to the jaw. But he refused to go down and comes back later in the round with a straight left hand. What a remarkable fighter. And we are Ramirez joined now is. by the unbeaten heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson. Mike, your reflections on the first four rounds of this terrific bout. Well, this is, this is a fight that's very difficult um, to judge because um, in fighting a fighter like Ramirez, you must move. There's no way you're going to beat Ramirez for head on. He's a professional fighter. He takes these punches, unbelievable. He doesn't even blink. And I'm, I'm very surprised that Chavez, as soon as he heard him, he should have opened up with everything. He went to the side, the body, the head, constantly just threw everything he had at him. That's everything. what your trainer said, Mike. He was sitting here complaining that Chavez didn't open up more. I think he had a little bit too much respect for this legendary fighter. And we all know he's a great fighter. He's been around. You've got a new career, Mike. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> Mike Tyson is the promoter of this evening's action along with Don King. Congratulations. Thank you. We're in the fifth round of this WBA and WBC World Championship lightweight bout between Jose Luis Ramirez and the Red Trunks, Julio Cesar Chavez in the white. We're expecting that later on in the evening, Larry Merchant will be able to talk at a little more length with the heavyweight champ, Mike Tyson. Give him up, man. Give him up. Low blow. And Ramirez comes right no back holding, there. No holding. Come on, break. Break. is now fully recovered, Mike? Absolutely. He's such a professional fighter, you know what I mean? It's vain almost. Look at him, he never blinks, continue to come, come on. Julio and, allows Jose Luis Ramirez to back him up. Did that hurt him in the eyes of the judges, you believe? I believe absolutely. Yeah. I believe that he's thinking about back when they started sparring with one another, because I heard they used to have a great deal of sparring with one another. And Ramirez is a total professional, like I said before. He's going to oh, constantly oh, come out. He's somewhat methodic. He continues to come and plot and plot, never taking a backward step. And in due time, he'll break Chavez. I know a lot of people don't think he'll break him. Well, Mike, I disagree with that. I, I agree with everything you said so far, but I don't think he'll break Chavez. I agree that he maybe has too much respect. He had too much respect there, and that goes back to the spawners. I definitely agree with that. But I don't think he'll break him. Well, a lot of strange things happen in the boxing That's right. true. As we both know. <laughs> In and out of the boxing ring. That's true, too. 34 seconds to go in the round. You've seen both men land at close quarters. Chavez continues to land the right-hand lead almost whenever he throws it. He's not doing enough. Like Mike Tyson said, he's not doing enough. Too much respect. If I was in his corner, if that was Mike, I would have told Mike, get out there, get right on this round. You had him almost out. What were you doing? Mike wouldn't show that respect for any opponent, would he, Kevin? He hasn't so far. Round five.
five comes to a close in a very close bout between two great champions. Just uh, one more thing for the moment, Mike. Did you see the Damiani Biggs fight Not today? Not at all. What happened? Damiani lost. Damiani, Damiani lost. Damiani stopped him at the end of five rounds on a cut and looked very impressive. Dominated. He really? said he wants to fight by you. Well, you know, Kevin, you shouldn't even talk. You know we're around. We're not going nowhere. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's fight him. Let's fight him. Thank, thanks so much, Mike. We'll be talking to you later. Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champ, goes on his way. Larry Merchant. We're in the corner here. You are okay. Use both hands. With a combination of uh, hooks. Combination of punches. How many times he tries to, to punch? To do your punch. You get him back. It, it appears that Chavez is willing to put on a clinic of boxing here. Whereas against some fighters, he feels he can overwhelm them with aggression and staying on top of them. That his quick hands here are more of an advantage than just staying shoulder to shoulder with a guy like Ramirez. That, that's a good point. Round six begins. Kevin, your assessment to this point in the bout. I have to bow very close. I, I, I got a dead even. One, two. And I'm sorry, as, I'm sorry, Avery Ramirez ahead, 3-2. And as the round begins, Chavez continues to dance, go side to side, try to present angles to Ramirez, who is, as Larry Merchant said earlier, the bull. Likes to come straight forward. Ramirez, bolder and bolder, it seems, after having been staggered Low blow. in the fourth round. Chavez with the straight right hand again. Low blow. Ramirez has not been able to solve the right hand leads by Julio Cesar Chavez, but Chavez doesn't follow up with the left does hook not, of the body. Does not, and, and Ramirez stays right in his face. Hit me some more, he's saying. He goes side to side, but he doesn't punch. That's a big mistake on uh, Chavez's part. He should be banging. And if it goes the distance, it will be a very tough fight to score. Another low blow, get away with it. Richard Steele, normally a very active referee, has stayed away from the two low blows. Well, he may not have been in an angle to see him. We can see him. Hunter, get out. Chavez just pawing with the jab. At no time in the fight has he really tried to use it as a weapon. Uh, and he should. he should. Snap it right in there. Good series to the head by Chavez. Again set up by the right hand lead. Ramirez keeps coming forward. We're almost to the midway point of the bout. There has been one great moment of drama when Ramirez was staggered in the fourth round, and Julio Cesar Chavez let him off the hook. That's right, he let him off the hook. The question, I think, is whether he did it deliberately. I think he did, the way I looked at it. We oh, hurt him there. He hurt right him. hand lead continues to hurt, hurt Ramirez. Again, Ramirez staggering. Ooh, this guy's hurt, but not opening up enough. Got him hurt again. Round is going to come to an end before Chavez can do anything oh. with it. Boy, Julio boy. Cesar Chavez with a rousing rally, but again, Jose Luis Ramirez stands right there. Took it all. Se lo he dicho, cuando usted quiera, póngase un poquito serio este round y nos vamos al vestuario prontito. Papá. I've been telling you that you can do it. Get serious. You're a phenomenal guy. Do it in this round if you want to do it. I told you, you do doing it fine. A little bit more and this is finished. Come on. You are showing that you are very good. A little bit more. Harold, how do you score it so far? Larry, four rounds to two favor Julio Cesar Chavez. I think the reason he backed off for the fourth round was he was waiting for the referee to count because he figured that it was a knockdown and, and Ramirez was very close to being down if his glove would have touched. Uh, Chavez is just landing too many hard right hands and he's dominating with that hard lead right hand. All right. 
That's a good point, but he should have been a nice guy. He should have opened up. <laughs> For what it's worth, I have Chavez ahead five rounds to one. I got it 3-3. Three, three. Another lead right. Ramirez with a solid right to the jaw of Julio Cesar Chavez. But Chavez takes a punch very well, as he showed against Rosario. And, and so does Ramirez, because he took a, a lot of punches at the end of that round. He, can't, he comes out fresh like it's the first let him round. Up, let him up, let him up. That's why he is a true professional, like Mike Tyson was saying before. He has over 100 fights. He's a true professional, this guy. He's been fighting more than half his life. He's 29, almost 30, and turned pro when he was 14. Another straight right hand to the jaw. That's right. He had 11 professional fights by the time of his 15th birthday as a flyweight. Lied about his age. <laughs> no amateur fights. Boy, landed all night with that straight right. Good body there. Another low blow that Chavez got away with. It was, was to it? the hip. <laughs> I couldn't see from my angle. No hold, no hold. Chavez should have been working on body more. And for the first time all night, Ramirez looks a little bit worn. He looked down at his shoe tops as he stepped back toward the ropes. It could be that the constant pounding with the right hand is starting to take its toll. A left and a right in close. He's got to do more of that. He's got to work the body more. I think if he worked the body more, he'd bring him down. That was a good right hand to the body. He's opening up. And now Ramirez is in trouble again. Good right hook ball by Ramirez. He answered. Chavez looks resolute. This is brutal punishment. Ramirez can't stop the right hand. He got him hurt. He should open up with everything he has here. He's not. Opinion. Step to the side and hit him. Get to the side. You talk about respect. Chavez is showing perhaps inordinate respect for his friend and former stablemate Jose Luis Ramirez. Plus, well, plus Ramirez is earned. He's taking these shots well. He won't go down. He's not fighting back as much right now. Starting to swell around the left eye. If I was Chavez, I just open up with everything. Chavez lands again to the left eye. Oh, he can't miss with that right hand. If he's holding back, I'd hate to see what he does with his enemy. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> These punches are all landing by Chavez. But I don't see the killer instinct. I don't know, maybe it's the other way around, Kevin. How does Ramirez stand up? Well, he's a true professional fighter like we, well, like we talked about and Mike Tyson talked about. That's a fact. This guy's a pro. Left hand lands. This round has been all Chavez. And a roar goes up for the crowd for all the overbetting. The over under was seven rounds. <laughs> I made that a two point round for Chavez. He is very good, but he is tired. Yellow. Be sure that he is getting tired, even though he is so good, he is tired, he's getting tired, and you could do it. He is very smart. Don't let him outsmart you. You have to hit him, you have to hit him. Luis, you have to hit him. Hit him hard. Um. You're doing very well. You are, you're fighting very well. Little more pressure. Little more pressure. Let's go. Let's do it now. Kevin, why are the handlers telling Ramirez, who certainly knows better, that Chavez is tired? I, I guess they're just trying to soup him up, give him confidence. <laughs> it goes to show you sometimes these guys don't know what they're watching. Uh, no hope, right? Yeah, but the cornerman can lie. The right hand doesn't lie. Exactly. <laughs> and he knows that. But again, you know, not to sound, we keep repeating, he's a very, top, he's a top professional fighter, this guy. This is what a professional fighter does. No matter how he feels, no matter what happens, he performs, and that's what Ramirez is doing. He just, in my opinion, is in with another potentially top professional fighter. That's why I had to disagree with Mike Tyson. He won't wear him down. There's a good body shot. Now it is Chavez who backs Ramirez up when they meet head-to-head -head in the center of the ring. I 
I think the tide has turned here, and I think Chavez is going to start to dominate. You think that Chavez senses now that he's weakened the bull well, and that, that he can he can dominate the That bull. is in control, yes. Solid right hand. See him move after he punched? That's what I like about that Chavez. Move Another right punching. hand. These are sensational blows at close range. Ramirez takes him well. I don't know what Chavez has for skin, but I'll tell you, it would make a hell of a sofa. It would never, it would never wear out. <laughs> well, that's another. He has another reputation of that. He just has tough skin, thick skin. And Ramirez's punches have lost their snap to the extent that Chavez is now willing to stand in head to head and take them in order to dish out his own blows. Chavez to the body, to the body. Now he's in close where he should have been, right along. Well, I don't think he's worried about what he gets in return now, Kevin. Ramirez is just pawing at him. Well, I'll tell you, he better worry a little bit because if he gets tailed, this guy could hurt him. You remember Rosario, he had him hurt in the 12th round, almost knocked him out after taking a beating for 12 rounds. That was a good right hook right there by Ramirez. This is a good exchange here. Kevin, I don't remember seeing an exchange like this in the corner on the ropes for this long with two guys hammering at each other in quite that almost clinical way. A You're right. I can't blood remember on the when bridge. it was. Yeah, a little trickle of blood on the bridge of Chavez's nose. Oh, yeah? I think it's his. Gonna exchange it again. I tell you, this is Ramirez, he's right there. And look at Chavez just back him up with the shoulders. That's right, right on, right on, close enough where he can't get hit. Some... Well, they're fighting for a neighborhood championship as well as a world championship, and there you saw a real neighborhood war. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let me see what we have here. Let me see. Let's do it as you were doing it before. Do not try to exchange punches with him. Do it as the, as at the beginning. As you were doing at the beginning. Boxing. Now he cut you already. That's not too serious. Don't worry about it. You have to keep on boxing. boxing. He, he has uh, one eye almost closed. So keep trying at it. Well, that cut doesn't really look that bad on his nose, but if I was Ramirez, I'd go right after with that straight left hand. Try to bust it open, but it doesn't look bad to me. If I'm Chavez, I'm going to get close. Work the body and go to the head. Larry, we're into the ninth, and the Mexican fans who drove up from south of the border have gotten their money's worth. So are all those out in television land uh, who are seeing two little giants at their best. Two, two top professional fighters at their best. These guys are both professional fighters in the true sense. And professional in the sense, Kevin, that you've got uh, from Customato. They're here to entertain. They're here to, to, to really fight. That's what I'm talking about. Give it their all, take the shot, come back, move their heads. The one man takes a lot, keeps coming. Chavez moves his head, I like that, it looks good. Boy, good right hand. Solid again. right hand nothing. lead. Didn't follow as you pointed out, Kevin. No holding, no holding. Great stuff. Jose Luis Ramirez has said that he was almost forced into this bout, that a part of him didn't want to fight his close personal friend, Julio Cesar Chavez. And both men say, regardless of the outcome, the friendship lasts forever. And I believe that. And that's why I mean they're professional fighters. They're great friends. They went in this ring and they're fighting like they're bitter enemies. And although it isn't official, they'll also get, from what I've heard, close to $900,000 each, which should help cement the friendship. That's right, that will keep you friends. <laughs> For doing something they used to do for nothing. That's right. <laughs> Two solid lefts and a right hand by Chavez. Then he the got accuracy out of, of his punches taking the toll. Then he got out of there. Just another good round for Chavez. 
And more and more, it looks like Chavez is going to be content to try to rack up a decision and depend on the judges here. That's right, just outpoint him. But if he hurt him along the line again, I would like to see if he'll go after him. I'm very curious to see that. There was some power punches by Ramirez, went downstairs, upstairs, answered by Chavez. It's a very entertaining fight. Kevin, more and more it appears that the tide of the bout has turned in Julio's favor. He's won the last several rounds. What must Ramirez do to reverse it again? Well, I think he'd have to jump on him and, like, you know, exchange with him, hoping to catch him with a, with a good shot to open up a little bit, back him up. He's, not, he's letting him box and control the tempo. He gets him on a rope. He lets him get off the rope. He's got to keep him on a rope. Maybe get a little rough. Grab him. Hold him. There's little tricks he can do. He better do it or he's going to lose this fight. Chavez landing right hand after right hand. Ramirez has never found a defense for it at any time in the nine nearly completed rounds. And now complete. And they touch gloves. I don't like that. Better. Harold, how do you have it at this stage of the game? Larry, I got it 88 to 83, 7 to 2 in rounds in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. Jose Luis Ramirez just doesn't seem to have any power left in that left hand. And I think Julio Cesar Chavez is just murdering him with those right hand leads. And Chavez is just sweeping the last five rounds in a row. And, and he's winning the fight very, very big. Agreed. Agreed. So we're unanimous. There you go. That's just. That's not what you would call a classic right hand. It's a kind of a somewhere between a jab and a big right hand and a hook. It's it, it's not a punch that's designed to really hurt. Not to knock you out, just to annoy you. Throw him off his pace if he was going to get although, into it. Although although I confess that I wouldn't want to be on the end of it. <laughs> Three rounds to go in this championship bout, increasingly dominated by the man in the white trunks, unbeaten. WBA World Lightweight Champion Julio Cesar Chavez. Oh. The one thing about Ramirez, you can't count him out. We can remember the Rosario fight. Rosario had him down twice in the first couple of rounds. He looked at he was gone, and he stopped Rosario in the fourth round. And if I remember earlier, I think it was the second round he, when he hurt, or he thought he hurt Chavez over in the corner, he opened up. That's what he has to do to get back in, really to have a chance to win. He's gonna have to knock him out. Chavez has twice had Ramirez seemingly close to out of his feet in the bout. Neither time was he able to knock him down. That was a good right hook by Ramirez. Chavez took it well. That was his best punch in many rounds. I think he hurt him a little bit. Good exchange here. This is entertainment, fellas. Solid right hand by Chavez. Another one, three in the last several seconds. A fourth solid right hand by Chavez. Ramirez continues to stand and deliver in return. Refuses to go. Don't hold him. Don't hold him. Boy, oh boy. I take my hat off to these two guys right now, no matter what happens. I'd pay to see the rematch. in his 59 bouts and 50 knockouts as Julio Cesar Chavez put a man away past the ninth round. That was Edwin Rosario here in Las Vegas. In a bout somewhat similar to this one. Maybe Lightning will strike. Probably not. Of course, Chavez has never been knocked out. He's unbeaten. I'm telling you, Ramirez has scored some strong punches this round. This has been Ramirez's best round in a while. Definitely. I mean, he hurt this guy. This guy's a good professional fighter. He takes it well. He comes back. Good round, good round. It's just target practice with the right hand, though, for Chavez. Ramirez can't even block it with the left. He doesn't even try. He should be bending. He should concentrate on it. I'd tell him that in the corner. I'd chastise him about it. Look at the heart of Jose Luis Ramirez. Pressing forward, always trying. Another right hand. Oh, 
This is remarkable sustained punishment that Ramirez has been able to endure and continue to fight. And fight well. He won that round. I agree. This is like one of those movies where you see so many punches, you say, nobody can take those punches. This is fiction. And what we're seeing here is two guys who are making reality out of that kind of fiction. Now you have cuts on twice. You keep on boxing, boxing, job, 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 and keep on working on him. <laughs> Try to hit him in the chest. In the chest, here, at the chest. We're all behind you. Don't let him hit you. Keep on punching. Don't, don't let him hit you. Always repeat your punches. Repeat your right hand, uh, Julio. Repeat your right hand. If it goes on this way, both men can go back to the old neighborhood with pride. With their heads held high, that's right. Six minutes to go. Julio Cesar Chavez in the white trunks, Jose Luis Ramirez in the red. We, we heard mostly cheerleading from the corners. There wasn't really any, any you know, substance to what they were saying. I don't think we're going to see anything too much different, Kevin. No, we're not. But if I was in the corner of, of Ramirez that time, he's got to get out there and really try to rub this guy up and open up. He landed some good punches that round. He heard it, but the man takes the shot well. Just go for it. He's got to go for a knockout. That's what I would be telling him. Mike Tyson still alongside us here at ringside and ready to talk with us a little bit more about what's going on in his own life and his career right after this bout. Tremendous championship action in the ring. Nine heads, there's a cut. And they should not stop the fight over that. No way, no how. Now we know that Ramirez is cut, Chavez is not. No blood coming from Chavez. They should not part. stop this fight. No, and Chavez is shaking his head because he's disappointed. I've been, you know, I've been curious all along. The two fighters who were noted for going forward, when and if that might happen. It was a distinct possibility. Uh, I'm certainly glad it didn't happen early in the fight. Accidental butt. That was an accidental butt. Let's clarify that right now. And particularly with the southpaw against the conventional right. fighter. There it is. There you saw both fighters coming straight nah. ahead, and they nah. stopped the fight. Nah. Nah. It's hard to see from here how bad that cut is, nah. except that it is trickling directly it's into trickling the eye. It's trickling down. So what? It doesn't look that bad. So A wide. painful anti-climax in the ring. That's bad. Neither fighter satisfied with this. That's nothing. They're crazy. The doctors are crazy. Harold? Okay, well, in my estimation, I think they're going to go to the scorecards. You deduct a point in the WBC rules from the fighter who is not injured. In other words, you deduct one point from Julio Cesar Chavez. You then score the 11th round, uh, deduct a point from Chavez, and go to the scorecards on an accidental butt. And I think that's what's going to happen. I'll get it. Hang on. Ooh, that was a bad little bang, but ah. As you remember, before the fight, I said, what we're going to see here is hand-to-hand -hand and head-to-head -head combat. <laughs> and I'm a little surprised that this hasn't happened earlier. And grateful. Well, I can argue with that a little bit, because their boys, their boys were fighting well, but they knew what they were doing. So when you know what you're doing, you don't bang your head. That was an accidental butt. They both were coming at the same angle, which, you know, what happened. A lot of times, with a southpaw against a conventional fighter, it happens in the first minute of the first That's round. That's right, but they're two good fighters. They know what they're doing, and they know each other. I, I still say they shouldn't stop the fight. They Who never stepped it? on each other's feet. They never entangled I, themselves I'll tell you in this, any way. I'll tell you this, fellas. If you had a division of of troops like, like these two guys, you could conquer the world. Let what me say this. <laughs> Let me say this. This is why I disagree with doctors having the power to stop fights. And, and whatnot. That guy to stop the fight. All right, Chavez is winning, but that guy has a chance to knock out at any point in time. Now, that's my reason right there. This was a good, entertaining fight. You took away two rounds for this man, maybe to have a chance. Maybe. Here we go. We're seeing the screen now. Don't look. It's nothing. It's nothing. That was a bad call. That's a bad call. You think that he based his decision on the fact that Chavez was far ahead 
And so he decided in a questionable situation. Yes, exactly, yes, and I don't think he should do that. The man wanted to keep fighting. Unless the man said something over there, which I don't think he did, he showed very uh, disappoint disappointment in his face. I mean, things like that pissed me off. Right now, this is in the hands of Lou Tabat, Art Lurie, and Rudy Jordan, the three judges empowered by the State Boxing Commission here in Nevada to now determine who will be the winner of this bout. Is it going to the scorecards? Is it an accidental bout? Well, Harold Letterman is suggesting that it will go to the scorecards, and that is the WBA rule, which is being used in this instance. But we haven't, have you heard anything? Harold Letterman, let's open Harold one more time for a final analysis here. Okay, Jim, it's not the WBA rule, it is the WBC rule. In a WBC rule, on an accidental butt, one point is deducted from the fighter who, who is not injured. In other, in other words, one point will be deducted from the score of Julio Cesar Chavez. I believe that they will score the 11th round, and the person who has the most points after the one point is deducted from Chavez's score will be the winner. Now, in our estimation, Chavez is far ahead, so Chavez should win on a technical decision. Right, well, let's okay. go up to Chuck Cole right now and find out. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision as rendered. Referee Richard Steele deducts one point from the score of Julio Chavez for the butt that has just occurred. I will now read the scores of the officials. Judge Rudy Jordan scores the bout 96-94. Judge Lou Tabbitt scores the bout 95-93. And Judge Art Lurie scores the bout 98-91. The winner on a technical decision. And now the possessor of two lightweight championship belts, Julio Cesar Chavez. That's right. Pretty close, though, Kevin. Too close. Too close. The one judge had it right. What did you have, Harold? Well, after, after deducting a point, I would have had it 90, 97 for Chavez, 92 for Jose right. Luis okay. Ramirez. I had Chavez five points ahead. I think that sounds about right. I wonder when the mother scores became so close. A lot of even rounds, Harold, you think, or what? Well, Kevin, I'll tell you the truth. Jose Luis Ramirez was the aggressor, and obviously they gave him credit for, for aggressiveness. I didn't think it was effective aggressiveness. I thought that when Ramirez would move forward, he would get nailed by uh, Julio Cesar Chavez's right hand. So you actually score on four points, on clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense, but it has to be effective aggressiveness. And, and this is the reason I think the judges scored that many points for Ramirez. They gave, it, they gave it to him on his effectiveness, but yet I still think it was an effective aggressiveness. I think that uh, Jose, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez landed the clean hard punches. But to make a good point, Harold, some judges are tremendously swayed just by which fighter is coming forward through most of the yeah, bout. But my point is, what, what were the rounds being scored? Even rounds were they giving them to Ramirez? Because I, I have it, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, six rounds for Chavez, seven, seven if you give him the 11. Well, let's look at the final punch what? stat statistics in the bout. What you have? Give us a profile of what happened in the bout. You can see that according to our computer operators, Julio Cesar Chavez landed 56% of his punches. Ramirez was the more active fighter. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring right now with the winner, Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio, what happened as you saw it on the cut, and do you think it was serious enough to stop the fight? ¿Crees que si la cortadura era lo suficientemente honda como para suspender el encuentro? Bueno, todavía no le he visto la cortada, pero... I still haven't seen the cut. Él, él cuando entra agacha mucho la cabeza. When he comes in, he, he comes down in his, with his head. Do you feel that both of you have won your honor in this fight? That you can go back home feeling that you both performed as well as you could? ¿Crees que ambos han ganado un honor con esta pelea y que pueden ir orgullosos ambos cuando regresen a México? Yo creo que sí, fue una buena pelea. I think so. It was a very good fight. Yo hice mi pelea. I did my fight. Sinceramente, Sincerely, le, les voy a confesar una cosa delante de Don King. I'm going to confess, confess something right in front of Don King. Yo tuve un problema de la costilla. I had a problem in one rib. Duré 10 días sin entrenar. I had 10 days without training. Y estuvo a punto de suspenderse la pelea porque me fui al hospital. And I sí. was about to suspend, to stop this fight. Y no because quise, I had to go to the hospital. Y no quise que la pelea se suspendiera porque... Ya, ya estaba muchos adelantos, iba a perder mucho dinero. And I didn't want the fight to be stopped because there was too much money involved. Where exactly were you hurt? ¿Dónde fue que te hirió la costilla? 
right here at this point. Uh, in the fourth round, the fourth you, round. you staggered him and, it, and then you backed off. Why didn't you finish him then if you were feeling hurt? En el cuarto round tú le pegaste duro y él se quedó tambaleando. Sin embargo, tú no lo finalizaste. ¿Por qué te quedaste pensándolo y no lo terminaste? I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> do, you, do you think do you think there was in you a little bit too much respect for him at that stage of the fight? Puedes calificar esto como mucho respeto de parte tuya hacia él. Respeto de amigo. I don't know. Yo no no sé. No no no. I I really don't know. Yo creo que hizo una pelea inteligente. I think I did a very intelligent fight. No tenía caso fajarme con él. It wasn't uh, it wasn't useful to 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 punch with him. Me estaba fajando Me estaba fajando nada más cuando había necesidad. I only did it when it was it was needed. Was the fact that your rib was hurt that the reason for for the fact that you stood outside and wanted to box him and take him apart in that fashion rather than to overwhelm him at the start. El hecho de que te dolía una costilla puede, eh, eh, es la razón para que tú trataras de boxear durante toda la pelea. Sinceramente sí, peleé con precaución. Sí, I fought with very, very uh, carefully. How do you feel now about what you're going to go to next? Upward to the junior welterweight championship? I don't know, I don't know, Don King. <laughs> Thank you, mucho gracias, I love you too much. Uh, what did you know, or Ligero, I don't know. You know what, or light, I But you know. do want to go on Pero to fight the bigger men. Yes, very good, yes. yes. Very good. Just one quote from you, you said you want to leave tracks in this life. What do you mean by that? ¿Qué tú quieres decir cuando tú quieres dejas una huella en la vida? Quiero que todos me recuerden como un gran peleador. I want everybody to remember me as a great fighter. Thank you very much. I love you all. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And back to Jim and Kevin. All right. Thanks, Larry. Kevin, a lot of people feel that the only man in the sport of boxing who is comparable to the fighter you train, Mike Tyson, in terms of his dominance, his skill, his ability to excel in his division, is Julio Cesar Chavez. How do you rank him in the overall boxing world after what you saw tonight? Well, I have to put him up to the top of the game right now. He just beat a, a determined professional fighter. He showed a lot of professional qualities. He, he may be even more, a, little, a little more professional than Mike Tyson right now. I mean, there's a lot of young fighters out there that have the potential to reach that, that point, but he's at that point right now. We'll have more chance to talk about that in a little while. Let's go back to Larry Merchant in the ring. And I'm with Richard Steele, the referee. Would you describe why the fight was stopped on a cut that from us in ringside on the other side of the ring appeared not to be that serious? The cut was very bad. The cut was uh, in a bad position because it was right in the middle of the eye, between the eyes. It was high, but it was between the eyes. That means that the blood was, would, would have been going into his eyes if we had to let the fight go on. You don't think somehow, and you can describe this to us as you see it, this was right after the fight, uh, after they banged heads, that a fighter who fought as bravely and courageously as Ramirez in this fight, don't you think he deserved the opportunity to show even if he could complete that round? Yes, yeah, so, well, you know, we gave him every opportunity, you know, uh, all through the fight. You know, he fought a very courageous, uh, very good fight, you know, but we cannot, we can't let a fight go on when a guy is seriously hurt. And that was uh, seriously cut. And most of the time I have seen during all of the years that that cut is going to just keep on going down and, and keep getting larger. Just this last thing, Richard, does the fact that it appeared that Chavez was winning the fight perhaps even dominating it in the late rounds. Does that go into the equation when you decide to stop a fight on that kind of a situation that, late? That has a lot to do with it because the guy was getting stronger. You know, Chavez is a wonderful fighter. He's a good counter puncher. He's a good banger. He's a good boxer. He's very clever, you know, and uh, he was showing that he was the best tonight. So that went into the decision. You sure. might as well stop it now before yeah. any further damage. Yes, yes. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Jim? And while Larry tries to get a hold of Jose Luis Ramirez, I will remind you that we still expect, before we leave the air, to have a few moments to talk with the world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson, who became in partnership, either formally or informally, with Don King. It's open to question exactly what the arrangement was at this moment. The co-promoter, at least, of tonight's card. And Larry Merchant gets ready to talk to Jose Luis Ramirez. One more brief comment from you, Kevin Rooney. You say you might have disagreed with the decision to stop the fight there, but to give credit where credit is due, a lot of people believe this man's the best referee in boxing, do they not? 
Well, that, I, I've heard that, but I listened to what he just had to say, and I totally disagree with what they what he said about stopping the fight. The man was this, the man was that. The, the cut was not going to, the blood was not pouring down in his eyes. You have to give the corner man, the cut man, a chance to stop the blood. I'm not sure what time was left around. I totally disagree with everything they said. It's, it's politics. I disagree with it. The man, if the man wanted to keep fighting, he should have been, been left to keep fighting. Let's see what he got to say up here about it. Kevin Rooney in a memorable debut, and we go back to Larry Merchant. All right, Jose Luis, could you tell us whether you thought the fight should have been stopped on that cut? Could you have continued? ¿Crees que la pelea debió debió haber sido suspendida debido a la cortadura o crees o tú crees que podrías haber continuado? Yo pienso haber continuado, puedo continuar, pero hubiera parado. I could have continued fighting, but they stopped it. Are you angry that they stopped it? Did you do you still feel you had a chance to pull out a miracle knockout? ¿Te disgustó que la cancelaran y que tú crees que hubieras podido ganar la pelea con un knockout? Bueno, yo, yo tenía confianza ya que para mí fue un atraco esto. Uh, I was confident because I think this, is what, this wasn't too fair. Do you feel, as Chavez feels, that you fought your best and that you can go home feeling that you did your best? Que si tú crees como lo cree Chávez, que tú hiciste una gran pelea y que puedes regresar a México orgulloso de haber hecho lo mejor que pudiste. Pues sí, yo para mí iba ganando la pelea, ya que él está andaba boxeando, pero iba presionando todo el tiempo. Yes, I think I was winning this fight because he was only boxing and I was doing the pressure. Did anything happen in there that reminded you of the old days when you used to spar together, or was it a different feeling? ¿Sucedió algo durante la pelea que te recordó cuando ustedes practicaban juntos o era un, un sentimiento distinto? No, pues este es lo mismo, ya que este boxeamos varias veces y le fue lo mismo aquí arriba. It was always the, the same as always. We've been fighting this way for, for years and it was the same thing. Only you used to do it for nothing and tonight you got a lot of money for it. La, la diferencia es que antes lo hacías de gratis y ahora está, está ganando mucho dinero. <laughs> pues sí, pero así es, así es la vida. That's li life is like that. That's life. Thank you. Muchas and gracias. thank you for a great performance. He says he wants to no come back conforme. for a rematch. He is not happy with it. He's going to come back for a rematch. That's how a true warrior would feel after a fight like that. Jim? All right, thanks very much, Larry. So just to sum up, we saw a tremendous battle between two great champions, Jose Luis Ramirez and Julio Cesar Chavez coming up. An interview now with Mike Tyson as Larry Merchant makes his way toward Tyson. And we rejoin Tyson's trainer, Kevin Rooney. And just to bring you up to date again, Chavez moves up to 60 and 0, according to our official count, and becomes champion in both the WBA and WBC statistics. And Jose Luis Ramirez drops to 101 and 7 and loses, I think, none of his luster as a great warrior. And tonight, if you're a fight fan, in your heart, you're probably just a little bit Mexican after watching this tremendous battle. Kevin, we're probably not going to get a chance after the Mike Tyson interview to talk with you about your reflections on what's happening to the fighter you train. Given the changes of the last few weeks, and while Larry gets ready to talk with Mike, are you optimistic about the heavyweight champion's future career? I'm optimistic. I have to be. I'm a professional. I feel if I get my fighter back in the gym, he's under my tutelage, that I'll get him back where his mind belongs, and that, and that is only concentrating on being the, top, the best fighter you can be, not being a promoter. He's too young to be a promoter right now. I think it's a bunch of hogwash. But if I can get him in the gym, let's get back to what, you know, what got you where you're at. And that, you know, you're a fighter. You're a fighter first. He seems to be more and more under the wing of promoter Don King and less and less a part of the world in which he was nurtured in boxing, the world created by Customato and Jimmy Jacobs and Bill Caton and yourself. Does that bother you? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a tiny bit of a concern. I try to ignore it all. I mean, the fighter's going to do what he wants to do anyway. He's a person. What he does outside of the boxing ring, is that's his business. I want him in the ring. If you want to be a fighter, come on back into the gym. Come back to Catskill, New York. If you want to train in Cleveland, I'll go there. You know, I'll go wherever you want me to train. I want to be the trainer, and I want you to remember that I'm the boss when we're training. You can make all the decisions. You always make the decisions when you get in the ring and you knock people out. You're the boss. You don't need people telling you you're the boss. I know you're the boss. Let me do my job, you do your job. Let, let the manager do his job. All right, let's let Larry Merchant do his job right now.